Today's episode is on the Eighth Commandment, which says, you shall not give false testimony against your neighbor. I, of course, learned uh, the meaning to it also, which was you should fear and love God, that you do not tell lies about your neighbor, betray him, or give him a bad name, but defend him, speak well of him, and take his words and actions in the kindest possible way. Hey, it's Amber, wife, mother, type A child of God. Here are little things we look at everyday issues from a biblical perspective with one simple goal, to know and love God more. Thanks for listening. Before we get to the Ten Commandments, I want to remind you that Pastor Jeremy Maddock is also covering the Ten Commandments in his podcast, Bible Breath. If you haven't heard Pastor Jeremy teach, you should know that he is incredibly gifted at taking really hard concepts and breaking them down into easy to understand bite-sized pieces. So it'll really add a lot to your study of the 10 commandments if you listen to him. So just check out the episode notes and we'll put a link there to send you right on over. You should fear and love God that you do not tell lies about your neighbor, betray him or give him a bad name, but defend him, speak well of him and take his words and actions in the kindest possible way. What a different world we would live in if that were the case. And again, as we get started, I just want to remind you that I have been reading and working through Luther's large catechism. So that's where I'm getting a lot of my ideas from this. This is where I'm gleaning the insights and can't recommend enough that you get your own copy and work through it and see what you might glean from it and how God might convict your heart through the Holy Spirit as you read these and really think about your life. That's what I'm trying to do. And there's a couple different approaches to this that Luther points out. Um, First of all, he points out government. You know, it's a judge's job to really determine the truth and the character of a person. So when a judge is hearing witnesses testify his job is to determine who's telling the truth. And Luther makes a note that it's a really important job and that judges should take it seriously. And what a problem it is for a land when judges are unjust and when they are bribed and willing to just listen to the person who has the most money or um, who pays them to listen to them. uh, Whereas Good judges, honest judges, judges that fear the Lord are just incredible blessings to a land because they will really um, judge fairly. Luther also makes a point that if you are ever called as a witness, not just in court, in court, that's one thing and that's super important. Um, It's important to tell the truth, but also a lot of times we're witnesses to conversations So when two people are talking about another person and you either come into the situation or you're brought into the situation. So somebody's talking about someone else and then they say, hey, Amber, what do you think about that person? Or have you noticed um, you are put in a particular position that you can either defend the person's good name or you can slander them or gossip about them. So I want to break those things down a little bit. So slandering is actually to tell false or damaging information about somebody. So making something up about that person that isn't true in order to make your point. Gossiping is telling potentially damaging information to others. It may be true, But even if it is true, it's probably not something that they would want talked about. So think about some of your, um, some situations that you've been in, like family situations, for instance. Think of some of the family situations that you've been in that have been the most painful. And think of if people have decided to spread those things around to other people. What would that do to your good name? Is it true? Yeah. Maybe you and your husband were having trouble for a while. Maybe you were fighting about something. Maybe you didn't want the whole congregation to know about it. 
Um, so just because it's true doesn't make it okay to publicize. So gossip, slander, that type of thing. When you're a witness in court, you're actually called upon to tell the truth. So that is the time that the judge is trying to make his judgment. So he needs to know, did this person do this? Were they there? Did you hear? What do you know? So that's when all the stuff needs to come out. In our congregations, in our workplaces, on the phone, on social media, that is not the case. Does everything, everybody need to know everything about everybody else? Nope. And most of us would prefer if everybody didn't know everything about us, about our family, about our problems. So it's a good reminder to all of us to keep a check on our mouth and make sure that we're only saying what's necessary to the people who really need to know. There are times that people need to know things. There are situations where it is completely necessary that we tell the truth, even if it damages that person, to the right people in order that something can happen. We might be, you know, protecting children by telling a truth. Uh, we might be really protecting the church if we know that they are putting someone in a treasury position who has a gambling problem or who maybe uses money in a way that isn't up to par. I, there are times that it's important that we speak up to the right people. That doesn't mean that we go tell everyone in the congregation what we know. It means we maybe need to tell the council president. We maybe need to go tell the pastor or we maybe need to sit down with one of the elders. Totally different than just spewing information about people. One of the points that Luther makes early on in his explanation of this commandment is that our good name and reputation is a treasure which must be protected. And that is the heart behind this entire commandment. And he also makes a point to say and point out that we all know bad things about everybody else. So if you live next to somebody, there's a good chance you're going to know the dirt on them. You're going to know when they maybe had a fight with their spouse or their children. You might hear some language. You might hear some yelling. You might hear some door slamming. You may be able to say, yeah, they're not very um, productive. Their lawn gets pretty long or they don't tend to... Yeah. We find out all kinds of dirt on people when we live next to them, right? Children know a lot of things about their parents. Parents know a lot of things about their children. We want to protect each other's good name and not only protect it, but defend it. Martin Luther said a whole lot of this commandment has to do with overlooking. Just because you know it about your neighbor doesn't mean you should tell other people. Doesn't mean that you should dwell on it. Just overlook it. God doesn't call us to judge our neighbor about every little thing we see. That's not our job. There are times when it is, like I said, there are times that we are called to give an account, but by and large, not necessary. So this is really about talking about other people. One thing we need to be careful of is not lying. Now, I like to point out that a lot of times we don't give lying the full credit that it deserves. So lying isn't just saying a blatant untruth about someone. It's also exaggerating. So when kids say, my mom never lets me, there's a good chance that's an exaggeration. Or if a wife says, my husband always flies off the handle, is always an accurate word there. Really, we want to be very careful about the way that we talk about other people. And one of the things that we need to be careful of is little untruths, exaggerations, the ways that we can color someone's image to look worse than they need to be. I had a situation that I needed help with. I was having trouble with a, a certain person 
And I asked a trusted friend for an advice. And one of the things that this friend said is when you've been hurt, it's very hard to be objective. And that was really good advice. And that was something that I had to think about for a long time after I talked to this person because sometimes if somebody says or does something that hurts you, okay, and you work to forgive them and it's in the past and you you go through, you know, the process and all that, even though you've forgiven them, if they're still in your life, sometimes It can be very easy to demonize that person because of things that have happened in the past. And all it takes is a little tiny something afterwards and you're right back into, well, of course they did this. They always, they never take me seriously. They always, da, 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 da. And we have to be really, really careful that we don't do that because it's so easy to fall into that trap. So we want to be really careful about that. We want to be careful about talking about people behind their back anyway. And I think a good rule of thumb is if you're going to talk behind somebody's back, I love this. One, talk to God. He knows their heart. He knows everything about it. And if you're talking to other people, let it be good. If you don't have anything good to say, maybe you shouldn't say anything at all. And that's not a bad thing. If if they do really need to know the truth, there are times and places for that to happen, but usually that is not how names are brought up and, and conversations happen. So make sure that you keep your mouth in check. We commit a very great sin when we spew everybody else's sins in public. Luther said that. He said, you know, to actually report on everybody else's sin is a greater sin than the person who's committing the sin. I'm not sure that it's a greater in terms of, he's just trying to make a point that, look, if you think you are, by reporting someone's sin, making yourself look good, you need to get yourself in check because you, by reporting that sin, are sinning just as much as the person who committed the sin. So when it comes to speaking poorly about someone, we need to keep our mouth shut. But when it comes to defending someone, that's when we really need to come into action. We need to speak up. And one of the things somebody taught me a long time ago is when we need to confront somebody about something that they've done that has hurt us or or maybe that, that they're doing that's wrong, it's a good thing to put it in a sandwich. And by that, I mean... Maybe you start out by saying, I really appreciate all that you've been doing, or I really appreciate how you've done this or whatever. I did notice this though. And then thank you for being so willing to talk to me. Thank you for being open to this discussion or what have you. So by that, you're, you're, you're not just condemning them and demonizing them, but you're really saying, you know, I appreciate some of the things that you do. And I just have this little issue and I was wondering if we could talk about it instead of just coming out in attack mode and just right off the bat condemning them. And that typically leaves people super defensive and it's not the best way to start a conversation. Luther also pointed out that gossip typically changes nothing. So if you think you're doing any good by gossiping, you absolutely are not. In fact, more often than not, all you're doing is adding fuel to a fire, which causes more problem than if you were just to do the right thing. If you know something about someone, A, pray for them. Always a best first resort. And B, if it's really bothering you, go talk to them. That's always the best thing to do whether it's an employee, a fellow employee at work, your boss, whatever, whoever, someone at church, someone in your family, instead of calling someone up and talking about it, just go talk to them. That's how hearts change. That's how we get to the bottom of so many times these things are misunderstandings. We think that somebody is doing this because they're lazy 
or they don't care or what have you. Whereas when you really find out what's going on, you go, oh, well, that's why they weren't helping me at work because they're struggling with their husband and they are just wore out and da 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 or whatever. You know, just having a conversation could clear up so many misconceptions. Somebody taught me in a Bible study, I was I was uh, teaching the book of Matthew, I think in 2019, and something was said that has stuck with me, and that is, if it's not your news, don't share it. Even if it's good news, and even if it's something that is being shared, it doesn't mean that it's your place to tell it. So think about when you found out you were going to have a baby, for instance, and you told your friends or you told some relatives or what have you. Um, That's exciting to do. So just because you know something about somebody, whether it's that they're getting married or that they're having a baby, or got a new job, or what have you. I think that was really good advice that I needed to hear. Just because you know something about somebody else doesn't mean that it's your news to share. It's really fun to be the person who gets to share some really good news with some friends. And also, it's good to tell certain people, sometimes you want to make sure you know, your family hears first or certain friends here because they've been supporting you or what have you. And so I thought that was really helpful to keep in mind that just because you know something and just because they didn't specifically say to you, hey, could you maybe not say anything to anyone? doesn't mean that it's your news to share. And if it's not your news to share, let the person whose news it is be the one to share the news and tell others about whatever's going on in their life and and share the excitement with others. All of this is to say that James in his book, um, James in the Bible, says, you know, a tongue is a really hard thing to keep in check. It is super, super powerful. And yet no one can seem to control it. And I've struggled with this my whole adult life. I certainly have been very honest and open about how I am definitely an Apostle Peter. I think things and the next thing I'm saying them and trying to get them back. And that's just to say it's a good thing for all of us to work on and to make sure that we're building people up. And that's been a really important part of the last couple of years of my life in terms of If you really want to help your marriage and you really want to help your kids, catch them doing good and dwell on the positive reinforcement. If you really want to tear down the people around you, dwell on the bad and tell them all the time, constantly what they're doing wrong. You will absolutely tear them down and you will absolutely ruin the relationship. I've told many, many people wasn't my idea. I got it from Nancy Lee DeMoss at the time. Now she's Nancy DeMoss Walgamuth. She has a radio program podcast called Revive Our Hearts. And for years and years and years, she did the 30-day challenge, which was asking spouses to only say positive things to their spouse for 30 days. And every day for that 30 days to come up with something else to compliment your spouse. So Thank you for providing for our family. Thank you that you take the garbage out. Thank you for taking the kids to school, whatever it is. But for 30 days, you find a different thing to compliment your spouse. For 30 days, nothing negative. You don't complain about anything. You don't gripe about anything. You don't tear them down in any way. And the result has been many people have come back and said, it totally changed my marriage. It saved my marriage. I had gotten in this cycle of complaining, griping, nagging, only pointing out the wrong. And to be reminded that when you compliment somebody and build them up, more often than not, it causes them to want to do better. 
and it causes them to want to be better. And it is the wind beneath their wings that sort of just spurs them to just do more and more and more instead of that griping and nagging just causes people to want to roll up in a ball and do nothing. So maybe that's what you can take from this. Uh, I've said it openly and honestly, one of the biggest mistakes I made, it took me way too long to learn, is that it wasn't my job to correct every fault in my children while I was raising them. And that had I to do it over, I would learn much sooner to use positive reinforcement much, much, much more often than negative discipline in raising my children. So I hope that helps you. In the meantime, let's really work on this to be a people who reminds people how how much they bless our lives. Send someone a note or a text. Send the older people who have been mentors in your life an email or a handwritten letter that tells them how much they've meant to you. Let's work on building each other up and encouraging each other because let me tell you, the world is really good at tearing us down. But as people of God, we can be different. And this commandment is that reminder. This has been Little Things because in God's kingdom, the little things are the big things.